stereochemistry of E2 mechanism. For this, let me introduce that the transition state of the E2 consists of the hydrogen atom and the leaving group from the substrate aligned in the plane. So that means that the substrate is aligned in a plane when we are talking about this kind of a partial double bond character building up in the very formation of a transition state. Then certainly in order to be in a plane, there are two possibilities. Let's get the two possibilities right. So the alignment can be of two types, anti-periplanar and the syn-periplanar. Planarity is there. Why planarity is there? Because partial double bond character is coming. So what ma'am? So there is an sp2 building up. So what ma'am? sp2 means trigonal planar. So what ma'am? Planar. That's what I'm heading to. Planarity is there. So who will tell the answer where planarity is there? Where are the molecules or the atoms in the same plane? Always think in terms of hybridization and if there is a linear or if there is a trigonal planar, you know there are planarity that is being talked about. So here when I'm talking about the alignment can be of two types. In order for this carbon halogen and carbon hydrogen bond to be in one plane. So carbon halogen where? where there is this bond breaking which is happening simultaneously as the carbon hydrogen bond where the again the bond breaking is occurring simultaneously with the help of this base doing its job and there is this partial double bond character building up so there is there are two ways by which this hydrogen this carbon this carbon and this halogen can be in one plane. Two possibility is this, that the hydrogen and the halogen are anti each other, opposite each other. One is here and the other one is just on the opposite. There is also one possibility that the same kind of a scenario, but halogen is here and the hydrogen is also here, right? And a partial double bond character is building up. So what is what is clear, right? So please see anti, when I'm talking about anti, this is an anti. The way of saying it, don't worry about this periplanar, perpendicular and the planar. That is how you can imagine it for now, right? That it is anti, opposite. You can see H and X are just opposite. Sin, periplanar. That means in the same plane, on the same side. So this is sin. So when I'm talking about the chemistry of E2, there is just one that we have to study. I gave you both the possibilities. When we talk about the CX and CH being in one plane, there are only two possibilities. The X and the H on the two adjacent carbons, opposite or on the same side, based on which we are making anti-periplanar and syn-periplanar. And the Anti-periplanar, let's get the hang of it once again. The H and the X atoms are oriented on the opposite sides in the plane of the molecule. Opposite sides, just like here, if you see it, please see. H and X are opposite, right? This is anti-periplanar. And when I'm talking about syn-periplanar, what is going to be happening is the H and the X atoms are oriented on the same side of the plane of the molecule, just like what you see here. So do you understand there are two ways in which the CH and CX bonds can be in the same plane based on which there can be two types of elimination, the anti-elimination and the syn elimination. This is important. What is important for us when we are talking about the E2 mechanism for us, anti-elimination is the most important. But let me show you both different types of eliminations which are possible, both the permutations, combinations which are possible and then we will talk specific with respect to the E2 mechanism. So this kind of an elimination where the H and X are leaving from the same side. In simple terms, the moral of the story is simple. That if the H and X are leaving from the same side, it's what is sin elimination, right? So this is what is sin elimination. The other one is, like I told you, is the anti-elimination. So please see, when I'm talking about the anti-elimination, the H and X are leaving, which are anti to each other, opposite to each other. 
and since h and x are opposite to each other right they're anti to each other e2 mechanism is also sometimes referred to as anti elimination sometimes you will see books writing that the other name of e2 is anti elimination because of the stereochemistry involved here so there is some specificity do you understand the reason why i'm saying specific i'm very specific when i'm eating i take care that there is let's say no onion in the food i'm very specific there is specificity okay do you understand why we use a term specific you you're specific you're particular about something right so anti and sin are the terms coming just right here for very important reason that we have a very important stereochemical aspect and a stereo specific concept coming here that specifically when we are talking about e2 mechanism there is one particular hydrogen that can only be eliminated which is the anti hydrogen anti hydrogen means some kind of a hydrogen which is not liking the substrate anti in that terms please understand what is the meaning of anti so when we are talking about the halogen the carbon to which the halogen is attached is the alpha carbon the beta carbons hydrogen should be anti that's what you have to take care of right ma'am what if there is no beta hydrogen which is anti no e2 then no e2 then okay so that's what is being spoken about here that there is some specificity coming your way some anti periplanar and anti elimination concept coming your way so h and x are opposite please see the x and h are opposite so this is being removed and this is being removed anti with respect to each other so this is why we are calling it anti elimination so stereochemistry of e2 mechanism that e2 reaction occurs predominantly in anti periplanar geometry so let's do one thing let's see it once again what's going on when we are talking about e2 mechanism in the nutshell what is the final picture check it out so we have taken a tertiary alkyl halide which you know now that it favors the formation of uh, alkene via e2 mechanism so let's say we are taking a base which is a strong base so chlorine and hydrogen which are anti to each other observe this what is the hydrogen which is the hydrogen that the base is attacking the hydrogen which is anti with respect to the halogen now and which is the one which is anti now you have understood how we are explaining it we know that we are talking about planarity that is building up when we are making a transition state right so the two you know atom or group or the molecules of consideration here is our leaving group and the hydrogen so leaving group which is let's say the chlorine in this case the hydrogen which is you can see is anti perfectly anti now which is being removed please see this is the one which is getting removed and what you're getting is alkene so stereochemistry which particular hydrogen is the base hunting here for obvious reasons ha huh? you know that base can easily go and take away this h so that it will face the least repulsion by the leaving group also that is also one of the important criteria to understand what's going on at a deeper level right so the transition state linearity coming base attacking which proton the proton which is anti with respect to leaving group and how are we check checking this kind of an anti position you know that leaving group carbon other carbon hydrogen so leaving group and hydrogen opposite to each other right so can i say e2 elimination is a kind of anti elimination now if i write it is there any objection there must not be any objection 